Okay, welcome and thank you everyone for joining today's session, Final Preparations for the CMS Requirements to Publish Your Standard Charges and Control the Price Message. So let's take a look at our objective over the next hour. As you all know, CMS is requiring all hospitals to post their standard charge master in a machine readable format. Last week, CMS published an additional Frequently Asked Questions document. In today's session, we're gonna share our recommendations to meet the requirements and lay the groundwork for your strategy to address CMS's encouragements related to providing comparative data and providing consumer-friendly insight in the patient's actual out-of-pocket cost. We want you to walk away today with a tangible strategy that you can take back to your organization and your leadership with recommendations. And the key word here is strategy. Some hospitals will simply just post their charge master to check the box and meet the mandate. But as we will discuss, doing that, doing just that, potentially presents a huge problem in the eyes of your patients. So before we get started, we're gonna go ahead and launch our first poll question of today. And that question is, what is your opinion on how far CMS has taken its price transparency requirements? And the options on this poll are too far, just right, or not far enough. And again, that question is, what is your opinion on how far CMS has taken its price transparency requirements? Do you think they've gone too far? Is it just right? Or have they not gone far enough? And we'll give everybody about 30 seconds to get their votes in. All right, it looks like most everybody has voted. Thank you for voting, and we will share the results of the poll results um, after the call today. So just some brief introductions before we really get started here. My name is Brad Josephson. I'm the Director of Marketing here at PMMC. Also with me today is Greg Kay, Senior Vice President at PMMC. Greg's been in healthcare for over 30 years and advises many of our clients across the country on price transparency strategies. Greg's going to kick off today's session with the latest from CMS. Great. Thanks, Brad. And we do appreciate everyone joining today's call. Uh, just as a recap, uh, the initial base rule uh, states that all hospitals will be required to publish their standard list of prices online in a machine readable format, and they must update the list of prices at least annually. This statement is somewhat generic and it did leave many with unanswered questions, uh, but as we noted with the quote from uh, Secretary Azar, uh, it was very clear that CMS is looking to move the industry to a new era where patients will have increased information, uh, specifically in the area of quality, pricing, so that they can make a more well-informed decision. Uh, their goal, being CMS's goal, is to drive competition. For our industry, this is gonna be the new normal going forward. And in addition to the initial rule, CMS has provided two frequently asked question documents. Now this second FAQ document was actually just released in the last week. So let's do a deeper dive with those clarifications. CMS has consistently stated that the new requirement applies to all U.S. hospitals. CMS recently further clarified that several subsets of healthcare providers are also included. In the first FAQ, CMS clearly stated the requirement to post charges applies to all items and services provided by the hospital. So one of the somewhat unclear requirements was whether hospitals would 
need to post drugs and biologicals. Uh, the second FAQ that they released last week really clarifies and erases any doubt uh, with that. Uh, CMS states that it is the responsibility of the hospital to make public a list of the hospital standard charges for all items and services provided by the hospital, including all drugs, biologicals, and all other items and services provided by the hospital. Now, for organizations that have pharmacy CDM shell codes, our team has recommended uh, pulling the data from the pharmacy module and also pulling the MAD ID and the charge and appending to the CDM file. Um, our recommendation uh, would be that the charge also assumes uh, the full vial or unit, in other words, the package price. Uh, from our vantage point, especially at this particular point in time, this is the most standard way to present the data, and it reduces the time and the risk with getting tangled up and developing consistent billable units. We believe this uh, new requirement from the second frequently asked question document last week also extends the requirements to supply items as well with their statement that it, in, that it should be covering all items and services. Now, CMS has also clarified that uh, with the term machine readable, uh, it's defined the format as being digitally accessible document that can be easily imported or read by a computer system such as Excel or CVS. CMS has specifically stated that a PDF file is not acceptable. Now, in the second frequently asked question document last week, CMS also added an additional requirement for hospitals to post their standard charges by DRG. Now, keep in mind that CMS does not specifically provide details with what data set what time frame or methodology should be used. In other words, should the list include just Medicare cases? Should Medicare cases be just traditional Medicare or traditional Medicare and Advantage cases? Should it include all cases, which would also take into consideration Medicaid and your commercial and self-pay accounts? Should you use a prior quarter, a prior calendar year, or a fiscal year? Should you use an average or a range? Our recommendation at this point is to clearly state in the document that you post what time frame, what data set, and what means of calculation you have used. We're recommending all cases for an annual period and that the list include an average. So the next question, do the requirements restrict a hospital from posting comparative quality and charge information or additional pricing transparency information? The answer to this is no. However, CMS clearly pointed out that they encourage hospitals to undertake efforts to engage in consumer-friendly communication of their charges including for drugs and biologicals that Greg mentioned, to help patients understand what their potential financial liability might be for services they obtain at the hospital, and to enable patients to compare charges for similar services across hospitals. Now, a hospital is not precluded from posting additional price transparency information in addition to its current standard charges. So there are two parts of this statement that I think really stand out. First, they are encouraging hospitals to help patients understand their potential financial liability. This can really be translated to mean a patient financial estimate. Second, they are encouraging comparative charge data for similar services across hospitals. So we had an idea that this is where CMS is heading and they likely will continue to head in this direction, but this really puts some punch behind it. 
So speaking of punches being behind it, um, as it relates to potential penalties with what happens if a hospital doesn't make public their list of charges, CMS has been real clear that the hospital would not be in compliance with the law. Since the original rule was published, and even after the initial frequently asked question document, some hospitals had indicated that they were going to take a wait and see approach to posting their charges. They wanted to see what everyone else was doing first. In the initial requirement and the first FAQ, there were no references to penalties. The second frequently asked question document last week did provide that additional clarification. CMS noted that hospitals that do not post charges will not be in compliance with the law and are subject to future penalties. They haven't specifically outlined what those penalties will be, but knowing CMS, they'll be retrospective in nature um, and potentially highly punitive. Our recommendation would be to post the information that CMS is requiring. Hopefully, everyone's finalizing their plans so that you'll have it up in the next two weeks. Thanks, Greg. And CMS also clarified that a state program does not exempt a hospital from this federal requirement. So we know that some individual states, such as Ohio and Florida, have state-specific requirements for hospitals to post some items in their charge master, such as top CPT codes by volume, room and board charges, delivery services, et cetera. So for example, in these states, you'll have to do both. Yeah, so please note that some hospitals are going to be listing their full CDM file. It will be including the revenue code, but most are not. Similarly, most are going to include the associated CPT code, but I have spoken with a few hospitals that are not planning on listing the actual CPT code. Again, both the reg requirement with the initial rule and the frequently asked question document hasn't specifically addressed this other than providing the CDM description and the corresponding charge itself. So let's recap the items you will need to have to be compliant uh, by January 1st. So first, your full charge master file should be linked from your hospital's website in a machine-readable format, which CMS has clearly outlined. The CDM file should also be listed with DRG code information. Now, this is not a requirement, but we do advise you to post a phone number uh, for patients to call with any questions. Um, also not a requirement, but again, we advise you to do this, and CMS is encouraging this, and that is to post comparative charge information. This will help give patients some context around charges, and CMS has hinted in the FAQs that this will be a future requirement. And as Greg stated, we now know 100% that supply and pharmacy charges are also required to be published. So that being said, let's go ahead and launch our poll question, our second poll question of the day. What is your level of concern about how your standard charges will be perceived by the public? And those options are very concerned, somewhat concerned, or not concerned. And again, that question, what is your level of concern about how your standard charges will be perceived by the public? Very concerned, somewhat concerned, or not concerned? And we'll give everybody just a few more seconds here to get their votes in. All right, it looks like most everybody has voted. Thank you. Uh, and at this point, uh, Greg is going to walk us through some examples of how hospitals are posting charge information.
Okay. So we thought we would use our time today to actually pull up and take a look at four different hospital websites to give you some indication of what other organizations are doing and the direction that they're headed. So the first group we're going to look at is Virginia Mason. And I'm actually going to pull up and we'll take a look at their actual website. So on their website, they're including uh, this information um, under their billing and insurance information. And you can see with their website, Virginia Mason is uh, definitely ahead of the curve uh, as it relates to getting information uh, listed on their website. Uh, they've incorporated a drop-down box area for their standard charges, again, under the billing and information area. And not only have they listed their CDM file, and if we click on their hyperlink, we can actually open the document and we can see that for Virginia Mason, as we had touched on a moment ago, they have included their charge code, their description code, their CPT code, as well as the corresponding fee. Now, Virginia Mason's gone one step further. While it's not a CMS requirement, they obviously have an understanding and appreciation for where CMS is going. They've also included a professional CDM file. They've also included uh, their hospital DRG information. And as with our recommendation, they included both the DRG code, the description. Their organization used a median charge for total cases, and they listed the year that that calculation was based off of. Now, they've also included an outpatient file with surgery charges. Again, not necessarily required, but it is listed. Um, Virginia Mason's website also included uh, a couple of other pieces of information. One is a patient cost estimator page. And for their organization, that takes you to um, a corresponding telephone number to contact their organization to get an estimate for what something would cost, uh, being the patient cost itself. They've also included some charge comparison data through the state association that also provides, uh, they've been working on this for several years, some, some comparative information uh, out in the state of Washington. Now, the next hospital we're going to look at is Ohio Health. Um, Ohio Health is in one of the states that Brad referenced earlier that includes um, and does have some state-specific requirements. Their organization is a multi-site location. So from their central website for Ohio Health, they've included price information along with the hospital billing policies specific to each hospital. And within that page, they've included at this particular point, they only have posted their state level requirements. So these are the compliance areas uh, for the state of Ohio. They'll be incorporating the additional federal requirement information, I'm sure, in the coming days. The next hospital we're going to look at is Mayo Clinic. And similar to the other three, Mayo Clinic includes um, their price estimate information underneath the billing and insurance page at Mayo Clinic. For their organization, their website, they include uh, graphic pictures along with hyperlinks into specific areas. So you can see you have to scroll down a little bit uh, below paying online, the arrival, insurance, billing information. So you have to read through a little bit of the key information before you get to the price estimates. And they include the price estimator tools first, followed by a link to the CMS hospital pricing. And for their organization, um, they have included a narrative of what CMS is requiring. And they've included, specific to each of their three location markets, a file link 
to pull up and list the corresponding charge code, the description, and the unit charge itself. As I mentioned earlier, some hospitals are listing the procedure code, some hospitals aren't. CMS hasn't really defined that one way or another, uh, just different ways organizations are, are listing and providing that information out on their website. Now the last group that we're going to look at is um, a hospital, uh, AnMed Health, and similar to the others that we've looked at this afternoon at AnMed Health, they have their patient billing information listed under their patient and family tab, the general patient information. And I like the way they've laid out their data in that they have addressed the billing information first. So you have to read through the basic narrative, payment options, and then the pricing information. And for the pricing transparency information, they've included um, a general narrative uh, related to what they've had to do to be in compliance with federal law. And they've included a simple hyperlink to pull up to see that complete list of standard charge codes. And again, we can open their particular file. And for their organization, similar to, to Mayo and others, they've listed the corresponding charge code, the charge description, and the unit price. Their organization has also listed out to, again, be in compliant with federal law, the average charge for inpatient episodes by DRG code, again, with a simple link to pull that particular file up. And again, not in a very complex way, but something that's easily accessible and machine readable. They've listed the DRG code, the description, and the corresponding charge. Again, in the narrative of their website, they listed um, the fact that it was an average charge, and they included some additional caveats that they thought were important and important to reference. Now, some states, uh, such as New Hampshire, South Carolina are two examples. They have incorporated and built more comparative pricing information. In South Carolina, as you can see, uh, they've included the ability to shop for different services. So we could do a drill down within South Carolina if we were a patient to look at a single hospital, select a specific service line, so I could look for a knee replacement as an example, and then I could select a specific hospital based upon a city or a county. And in doing that, they provide some additional comparative information based upon the average charge, the charge per day, the length of stay, and some additional information as it relates to reimbursement data and their mix of services. This is just a good indication of how the industry is evolving at a fairly rapid pace. In some cases, hospital uh, state associations are leading the way, uh, but obviously this is the type of information that CMS has been monitoring and trying to bring everyone up to the same point as we move to uh, providing a greater level of pricing transparency throughout our entire industry and throughout the country. Thanks, Greg. And in addition to that, uh, CMS published a source sought notice for industry input for a web-based platform to support healthcare pricing comparison and bidding activity. That combined with the CMS administrator's comments about price shopping and their deployment this month of the procedure payment lookup tool is a very strong indication that CMS is moving towards a retail-like model that allows patients to shop for healthcare services. We could be talking about the cars.com for healthcare. It's really not hard to connect the dots here now. CMS's mandate for all hospitals to publish a standard list of charges online really is just the first step or the tip of the iceberg in CMS's long-term intentions for pushing price transparency. 
Brad, you're absolutely correct. CMS's intention is to not only increase pricing transparency, but actually be the catalyst for a new means of shopping for healthcare. So let's take a look at what they've built so far under their procedure payment lookup tool. Now with this particular tool, it's on the medicare.gov site and the public, individual Medicare beneficiaries can go online to this site and pull up a specific code or they could type in a keyword such as hernia and it's a smart search. So the search is going to bring back different results that have that particular word listed in the search itself. I'm going to select the second line being repair of groin hernia as an endoscopic procedure. And we can see the response that CMS is providing back. This is a national average based upon Medicare 2018 payment and copayment amounts, but it's listing what the patient is projected to pay on average depending on their site of service. If a patient for this particular procedure goes to an AMSURG center for this particular procedure, we're looking at something that's roughly half the cost of going to a hospital outpatient department. Today, this information is rolled up, fairly generic. It is code specific, but it's national in nature, and it doesn't include physician fees, it's only listing one particular code, even though the treatment may include other codes itself. But it does provide the patient with key insight as to what their out-of-pocket is going to be for a Medicare-covered service. Now, as we note here, CMS is also including a couple of hyperlinks to your particular organization. So if I click on the word hospital, it's going to take us over to the hospital compare within medicare.gov. And I could type in our local zip code to quickly pull up the list of hospitals that provide that particular service in close proximity. And it's going to provide that information back within a search radius that I could easily update. And it's going to allow me to hyperlink and drill into each individual hospital. And the interesting thing is with the pricing transparency requirements and the frequently asked question documents that we reviewed earlier, CMS is encouraging hospitals to incorporate comparative charge data as well as comparative quality data. This is a good indication of where CMS is thinking, where they're heading. If we look at what they're profiling as it relates to the overall quality metrics, this could be something that you could incorporate into your website in 2019 or provide links to this particular site, depending on how you want to control the narrative and control the information that you're providing to your patients. Thanks, Greg. And I think we'll take a step back now and look at three words that are so simple yet so confusing because they have completely different meanings for payers, providers, and consumers. So let's break down charges versus prices. CMS is requiring hospitals to publish charges, but this isn't really helping patients know what it will actually cost them. Most patients do not understand that retail charges are almost never paid. They also do not understand the relationship between hospitals and payers, and don't often make the connection that charges are priced high so that payers can receive discounts. Yeah, great point, Brad. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, with, with last week's frequently asked question document, uh, CMS was very specific with their encouragement for our industry to provide both comparative quality and charge data. Um, as I noted in their procedure lookup tool, uh, they've included links to, the, to specific hospitals by zip code. Um, so, as I mentioned a moment ago, that may be something that you want to consider incorporating into your website and where you're listing 
the detailed price information. This could be a very helpful piece of information for your local community, your local market, and your website being that comparative resource location to go to so that when your patients are shopping, they're going to your website first. Now, one other piece to keep in mind, CMS has been providing comparative charge data for a number of years. And this data is probably something that you could use in other ways. So why not repurpose this type of MedPAR data, if you will, to really provide some graphical information to educate your patients on your charges at your hospital compared to potentially statewide averages, national averages, or other hospitals in your marketplace. The statewide and national comparison may be a good place to start as you guys go forward into 2019. Now, one thing to also keep in mind, and we looked at a moment ago with a couple of the hospital examples, CMS is requiring hospitals to post their charges by DRG code. Now, you can post your average charge per case, but you can also take it one step further and include other key relevant pieces of information like the average length of stay, or you may also want to incorporate, again, some comparative information such as your statewide average. CMS also notes that they're looking for our industry to provide information that is easy to use. One way that you may want to think about or consider in the future will be to rolling up the DRG codes into clear service line categories to make it a little easier for patients to really understand and where to go in their navigation of what something is going to cost, if you will, or what something is going to be as it relates to the charge that may ultimately lead to their cost. So to help facilitate this, uh, PMMC will be sending out to all of the participants on today's call a statewide average report by DRG code. It'll be specific to your state so it'll give you a starting point, if you will, if you want to be able to include some comparative charge information. You may also want to check with your state hospital association to gather some, some more comparative charge information. One thing to keep in mind, showing your charges um, is for inpatient as well as outpatient. As we touched on the example with Virginia Mason, They've been very proactive in providing not only the detailed charge information, but also the comparative physician information, the comparative inpatient DRG information, as well as outpatient information. The price shopping can stop at your website if you provide relevant information to your patients. That's something to really weigh and keep in mind and work with your marketing department in the coming year. With CMS data, you can post heavily price shopped items such as MRIs and eliminate the need for patients to link to other data sources. This will help reduce the risk of patients getting an apples to orange comparison so that you're controlling, if you will, that charge to charge comparison. Through your website, you can control that process and again, really be the source of healthcare pricing information for your community. Now with consumerism on the rise and the focus on pricing and charge information, you're gonna to need to know what procedures or items you're getting calls or complaints about. What items are price shopped most frequently who you're competing with, whether that be hospitals or other freestanding labs or radiology clinics. And lastly, procedures or services where you might be losing volume due to your charge. Tracking this information going forward is going to be key. Yeah, and I think it's also important to recognize the fact that the media will now have access to this charge information really for the first time ever. 
and it's almost guaranteed that they will be examining the charge master in order to look for a story and potentially spin it. So it's important to keep the three A's in mind, acknowledge, apologize, and action. So if you hear complaints from patients or get questions from the media, acknowledge that these are charge prices and that they don't accurately reflect what the patient will likely pay out of pocket. Apologize if it's created potentially any confusion, and then take action. So an example might be to help that patient get, a, get an estimate of their cost so they can better, um, better plan financially. And then it's also important to have um, a disaster plan in place. So just a few basic tips when you're preparing for a potential media crisis, and many of your organizations might already have this in place today. Um, but when you're developing a disaster plan, the key really is to manage the media and the community's opinion of your facility. Uh, the second point would be to designate a crisis team, and this includes designating a point person so the media knows who to contact for a statement. It's also important to train uh, all of your staff on media communication. Clearly communicate with all employees that they should not be speaking to the media. Give staff a phrase to use if the media does approach them for comments. If all staff members are using the same phrase, media won't become skeptical and they likely won't pursue multiple staff members for comments. Uh, the next point would be to appoint a spokesperson, and it's important that this media spokesperson is articulate, uh, able to handle emotions, and those tough rapid-fire questions. And then the last step, which is probably the most important, is to be truthful at all times. So the public's gonna respond more favorably if they feel that the hospital is being truthful and forthcoming. Uh, it's important to never place blame or make excuses publicly and to use uh, professional terms, uh, accurate facts, and articulate descriptions. The public is often more willing to assist local medical facilities to survive after a potential media crisis if they trust the facility and that they feel they handled the crisis honestly and with integrity. So the bottom line here is to just be prepared. A public relations and media management plan is the best way to minimize the damage of a potential PR crisis. So this all being said, why is it important to provide additional pricing information? And above all, why is a pricing strategy needed? So here's what we know today. 36% of healthcare consumers have price shopped online or via a mobile app within the last year. And that's according to a recent United Healthcare survey. And that number is only going to grow because half of the 72 million people in the millennial generation is now price shopping. The second point, which we already know now, is because CMS is demanding it. 100% of hospitals, will have to post 100% of their charges. And this third point is because consumers don't feel obligated. 90% of patients actually said that they do not feel obligated to stay with a healthcare provider who doesn't deliver an overall satisfactory digital experience. So they'll just leave and go somewhere else. The big takeaway here is this. Without a pricing strategy, consumers will vote with their wallet. If your hospital isn't providing a satisfactory digital experience with pricing information, they could end up leaving and switching providers. So at this point, we're gonna pause for our final poll question. And that question is, given that CMS encourages comparing charges and patient financial estimates online, do you believe that these things will become requirements? And again, that question is, given that CMS is now encouraging comparing charges and providing financial estimates online for patients, do you believe that these will eventually become requirements? And this is just a simple yes or no.
Well, it looks like uh, most everyone here has voted, so thank you for getting your responses in. And I do want to point out that we will be taking questions at the end of the session. We do see some came in throughout uh, the webinar presentation, so I just wanted to make a note that we will be taking uh, as many of those at the end as we have time for. Okay, well, thanks for uh, voting with the poll question. So let's look at uh, a real media story uh, tying into Brad's comment about preparing for um, what may be lying ahead, especially in Q1, Q2, as you begin posting your charges. Um, we've touched on this slide in some past uh, sessions. We think it's a, a terrific real life story that did occur. And it highlights, using a very common CAT scan of the ad abdomen, how a comparison of charges and costs can play out. If one organization is posting their charge, which you will be required to do here beginning January 1, and another organization is more readily posting or providing the patient cost information, we can have two very conflicting pieces of information. Both pieces of information be, may be out on the organization's website, but just keep in mind, you're going to want to include that patient cost in a place that's more easily accessible than potentially your charge information. If you recall back to a few of the websites that we walked through, a few of them listed the charge information first, followed by the patient cost information further down on the page. Those would be places where you may want to look at flipping that information because the reality is, as the hospitals start to provide their true cost of what the patient responsibility is going to be, the price difference, the charge to cost difference, if you will, may not be all that great if we're truly comparing apples to oranges. You've got an opportunity to change the narrative as we go forward in 2019 so that the patient's actual price um, may not be as significantly more different from one provider to the next if we really take into account the exact services that the patient's going to be scheduled for the insurance allowable, the coinsurance, the copayment, all of the relevant components are taken into account. When we apply the insurance information to this specific, specific example, the price difference, as we can see here, is less than $100. You've got the ability to change the narrative by including both easy, relevant to use, and easy to find data along with the right comparative charge and quality data. The key is going to be to start to change this narrative and meet patients online as they're researching and shopping for services. And we also know that digital expectations of consumers are changing rapidly. So from another recent webinar that we hosted, we learned that there's a large gap between online consumer expectations and what healthcare providers are offering today. So for example, 47% of consumers now expect personalized service online. However, only 7% of healthcare providers on that webinar I mentioned were currently offering personalized patient estimates. So that's really an expectation that we as a healthcare industry need to start embracing. I mentioned earlier that 36% of patients have used the internet or mobile apps during the past year to compare the quality and cost of medical services. And another impactful statistic is this. One in 10 patients said that they would actually switch healthcare providers after price shopping. 
So let's say you average 100,000 patients a year, and if we assume that 36% are going to price shop, that's 36,000 patients. And of those 36,000 patients, 10% said that they would switch providers. So you could potentially lose 3,600 patients alone just to price shopping. This is the bottom line impact that we really need to start taking seriously. So what do consumers want from their healthcare providers? They used to just want to know, will I get better, and how much will this cost? But now, they want to know, how much will this cost me? Not only that, they want to know if they're getting a good deal. And that's why the, that 36% are price shopping. So what am I going to pay for an MRI at your hospital versus the competition in your local market? And then finally, how do I get this without a hassle? You only have about eight seconds to capture the consumer's attention online. If you don't, they will get frustrated and simply move on, potentially to a competitor. So now let's look at an example of how to meet these new consumer demands. And keep in mind the points we just talked about. First and foremost, we need to capture the patient's demographics. So in this example, Notice the option for the preferred method of contact. It's subtle, but it puts the patient in control for how they want to be contacted, and it reinforces that point about personalization I made earlier. Next up is the patient's insurance information, which is one of the key factors to producing an accurate estimate for that patient. Here we can now select the service and even compare multiple services. So personally, my favorite aspect of this example is that I can compare prices across different facilities within this healthcare system. So I can choose the best price based on my location. Again, it's personalized. If I'm especially price conscious, I might choose to drive a little further in order to save some money. For any health systems on the call today, this is definitely a key consideration. So keeping everything in mind that we've talked about today, how do you bring this all together with the January 1st deadline looming? And how do you guide your patients to what's not only best for them, but what is also best for your organization? So this is a conceptual model of how to guide your patients and how to control that price message. Let's take a look at the message here. It's very simple. Know the cost of your healthcare. We mentioned that CMS requires us to publish standard charges but that doesn't accurately reflect what it will cost the patient out of pocket. If the patient chooses not to get an estimate now, that's okay. If they scroll down, they will now see how your hospital compares to the local market. This isn't the most relevant information for them, but it still educates them about charges and at least gives them some context. Notice, however, that we're still attempting them to guide we're still attempting to guide them toward an estimate. So now back to the CMS rule. We can still provide that list of standard charges that CMS requires, but notice how we've placed it at the bottom of the page. We don't really want patients to go here because it's really not the most helpful or relevant information for them. You can see here again that we are still trying to guide them to get an estimate. So notice that we've tried to guide the patient four different times to get that estimate, and we only link to the list of standard charges once. As long as you link to the list of charges in a machine-readable format that CMS outlined, similar to the examples that Greg showed earlier, you will have successfully met the requirement. The bottom line is that you will have to post char standard charges no matter what. Everyone on this call will be doing that on or before January 1st. We just believe that there is a better way to educate your patients, and we want you as the healthcare provider to control the pricing narrative and not CMS. So we know January 1st is the deadline to publish a list of standard charges in a machine-readable format. There is no getting around that. But there are things you can be doing today to get ahead of pricing transparency. First of all, you should know how your commodity pricing compares to the market. For items that are often price shopped, will you be the high cost provider? This is really important to know. Then before posting your CDM, 
It's important to consolidate your charge master into a single file that is machine readable, which we now should know factor in pharmacy and supply items. You may not have time to change your prices before January 1st, or you may think that you can only change prices once a year based on payer contract language. The price transparency rule states, however, that you should update this information at least annually or more often as appropriate. This means if you lower charges after January 1st, you can still push out the updates at any time. For hospitals who do not want to submit price changes to payers, a revenue neutral charge master adjustment is certainly an option and can help organizations focus on improving commodity pricing without a revenue impact. Taking control of the pricing message and allowing patients to determine their out-of-pocket costs through your hospital's website may not be a realistic goal for January 1st, but it can be a goal you start working towards right away. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a few questions here from the audience, and we will get those pulled up. So the first question here, Greg, will Medicare or Medicaid be posting their reimbursement next to our charges? Uh, yes. So our, our projection is that's probably something that's coming in fairly short order. Um, when, when you think about uh, Medicare reimbursement, Medicaid reimbursement is currently public available information. Uh, CMS does provide that with data files uh, today. Uh, it's probably just a short matter of time before that is going to be uh, something we're going to start to see out there. The fact that CMS is already putting out um, that procedure code lookup tool that provides patients with uh, an indication of what their coinsurance portion is going to be that 20 or it could be anywhere from 18 to 30 percent but in general the 20 percent coinsurance is directly tied to the allowed amount so in our view the Medicare reimbursement will likely be the one of the, the two-part question there with with Medicare or Medicaid being posted we think Medicare probably is moving that direction in terms of the reimbursement because the charge and the procedure drive the reimbursement, and that negotiated allowed amount, the reimbursement, is what drives the patient portion. Thanks, Greg. So another question here. As a critical access hospital, we do not get paid by DRGs. Are we required to post some kind of standard charge for a DRG? Um, CMS did not um, outline a difference. Um, our recommendation would be to definitely um, go through your financial information, look at either your 2017 or 2018 data uh, to pull out and create an average charge uh, per service. And our recommendation would be to roll up and present that information online by DRG. Thanks, Greg. Here's a, a good question. Uh, the Medicare out-of-pocket has no relationship to gross charges, so we don't understand the mixed message here. I completely agree. Um, there is a mixed message. I think CMS is pushing this from two different angles. Um, I think their request to post information based upon charges was an easy first step in requiring you to post your CDM file. It's probably designed to be more of an embarrassment than it is truly patient useful information. But if you look at their procedure lookup and how they're moving towards tying that information by procedure to what the patient responsibility is, uh, is then you can see where they're headed. It, it, it really is that short leap from gross charges to the Medicare out-of-pocket, and that ties back to the first question, 
will Medicare be posting reimbursement by service uh, location? More than likely, they probably will. Thanks, Greg. So the, the next question is, will you be providing these slides? Uh, yes, Greg, we will. So we'll be sending out a copy of the presentation along with a uh, recording in the next day or so. So the next question is, uh, we have dozens of one-to-many charge code for implants. We need to post every individual brand and size for implant. And in parentheses, they noted this could be tens of thousands of items with pricing. Or will it be sufficient to say, cost varies, please call? So with the CMS requirement, they are very specific that they are looking for you to post all items and services that you have in your CDM. And they went one step further. Uh, with the clarification with pharmacy that that should include um, all pharmacy and biologicals. Um, I know that will create, especially on the supply side, uh, a very large file, um, but we believe to stay compliant, uh, you should be moving towards uh, providing that information. Uh, next question here, should I list all DRGs even for services that I don't provide? Uh, it may be simpler to do it that way. That way you could just list all DRGs, and for those that um, aren't applicable, you could just list NA. Sounds good. Uh, please explain what you mean by rolling up the prices by DRG. Yeah, so there are different ways. Uh, NBC category would be one example of rolling up uh, DRGs into more of a broader service line. Uh, PMMC, uh, just doing pricing analysis work over the years, uh, has developed uh, a methodology of rolling up DRGs into common service categories to make it a little bit more relevant as we're comparing one hospital or one service location uh, one place to another. Uh, we think that's how patients would really want to see uh, services. The, the, the DRG level data is going to be a little bit too confusing, so you may want to roll up and provide some comparative analysis for, again, simple things like uh, medicine, cardiovascular, uh, surgery, um, orthopedic would be just a, a few examples of those roll up categories. Thanks, Greg, for addressing that. Uh, another question we have, when you go to Medicare to look up procedures, do you have to have Medicare to access this? Can anyone look up the procedures? So with the new tool that they've just rolled out, uh, that will be open to the public. There's no access restriction associated with it. So the general public can go online to that website link and enter um, either a keyword or a specific code to do a, um, a uh, price lookup of what it's going to cost the patient, and it's going to delineate that information initially based upon the national average data, listing out what the patient responsibility is going to be being their uh, coinsurance out-of-pocket component. In our view, CMS will be moving in fairly short order uh, to incorporate um, more of a drill down from that national level into either state-specific, market-specific, or even hospital-specific uh, data. Sounds good. Thanks, Greg. And I know we're coming up on the hour here, and I think we had a lot of good questions today, some of them a little bit more tactical relating to the rule. Uh, but I do think the big takeaway here is that everybody's going to have to adhere to this mandate by January 1st, but it really goes beyond just posting the standard charge master. It's really important to think ahead and have a strategy and think about what the implications are for posting just the, start, uh, the standard charge master 
and really think about what is most meaningful and relevant for your patients. I couldn't agree more, Brad. I think everyone needs to be prepared over the next few weeks to address the tactical steps, and that is posting your CDM file, posting the DRG information. Uh, but the bigger picture, as Brad noted, is spot on. We need to be looking as an industry and as healthcare providers, how do we come up with a strategy that addresses the critical pieces of not just charge transparency, but real true price transparency? and making sure we're providing to our patients, our consumers, with what they're looking for. And that piece, in other words, what something costs me as an individual, is going to be a relevant factor that we're going to have to focus on as we move into 2019.